Well, quite a number of people will be filing flood insurance claims after this disaster is over. That's exactly right. Now, joining us to talk about that is Richard Johnson with the Insurance Council of Texas. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, we want to first ask you if you have any flood damage. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me. Um, the first thing to ask uh, is, 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 do you have flood insurance? Uh, flood insurance is something that's not covered in your typical homeowner's policy. Um, it might be in a renter's policy, so you should check that out, and it would cover your personal items that, that would be in your within your within your domicile. So that's really the first thing that I'd be checking is to uh, or looking into is if you have flood insurance policy. But you you probably know if you have it, and if you don't, you don't. But if you don't, what is the window of opportunity for you to file and how does that impact today's situation? Yeah, go, if you do if you do have it, go ahead and file. If you don't have it, call your insurance company anyway. Uh, at least get your, you know, if your automobile is flooded or damaged, uh, you may not have that property insurance, but at least um, if you have comprehensive coverage in your auto insurance policy, you can get that claim. Um, you know, and think about, you know, since we've had flooding already, we're early in the season, we're about a month away from hurricane season starting. Um, you know, think about that flood insurance now and buy it now because it takes 30 days for that flood insurance policy to kick in after you buy it. Could you tell us a little about the difference between claims if you own a home versus if you're renting? Yeah, really, it's going to work exactly the same. So, if you're renting a home, the claims that you're going to claims that you're going to file are really on the personal items. So, if you were to pick up a home and kind of shake it around, and all your furniture and personal belongings would fall out, those would be the things that you would that you would be looking into. Whereas, if you own a home and you are uh, filing a claim on your home, that's everything inside, all your personal belongings, but also any damage that was done to the building. If you're renting, damage done to the building. That's going to be the building owner or your landlord or, or uh, the person who owns the property versus the person that's leasing. Yeah, for folks who may have evacuated from their property and they go back, should they be taking inventory of this damage? Any pictures, videos? What is the best way to kind of make sure you have all the information in one place for the adjuster? Really, really good point. That's exactly what you should do. Go ahead and take videos. Go ahead and take pictures. Um, start making a list uh, of of the you know, especially the big ticket items. You know, any electronics, any kind of jewelry that you might be looking for. Uh, make sure that you you are, are taking that inventory. And if you are not under flood coverage uh, or or flood evacuation orders right now. Get that inventory ahead of time. When your house is intact, start taking video and pictures. Just sit in the middle of your room with your with your phone, take a video, email it to yourself, just so you have a record for the future, so you can show your insurance company the items that you did have, what type of flooring you might have, what kind of countertops, and what kind of uh, personal items you might have in your in your house as well, and just to show show get a good image of what your home was like before the damage. All right, that's some really good tips there, Richard Johnson with the Insurance Council of Texas. Thanks so much for that insight. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it.